Man, I'm so tired. Wait, where the heck am I? This isn't the escape pod. Hello? Anybody listening to me? Prisoner 027, refrain from yelling. Yelling? You want me to yell? I can give you a yell! Ow! What the- Any bad behaviors will result in a controlled shock via the chip installed in your spine. What? How did you get it back there? Please stay in your cell until an official cat council member goes through the proper paperwork to have you freed. Great. Now I'm in a prison. Guess there's only one thing to do but use these cameras as a way to record videos and send them to YouTube and Odyssey by hacking them. You know, as you do. Seeing as I'm far from home and missing some people, let's talk about the one group of people that rarely ever will go against you. Family. Families aren't perfect, but most of the time they will be there for you and would have raised you. You are a part of their legacy and your spouse and children will be your legacy. But when it comes to writing, family is a tool with many characters in it. The relationship your character or characters have with their own family can be used in many ways or not at all. If you don't plan to use a character's family in any way, go ahead. It's not a bad thing, honestly, depending upon your story, so I'm not going to yell at you or think less if you create a character and don't think about how their parents or siblings might act or react to their actions in the plot. Now, the most minimal way to use family is as a motivation. The common motivation is having the villain kidnap a family member to force the plot to happen. This can be used as a weakness for the main character because it can cause them to become more emotional or irrational, which can lead them into more dangerous situations or being exploited. But their kidnapping can also cause them to become more focused on their rescue and show how much of a badass they truly can be. In the second case, what I mean is that your hero before could have been like some normal hero, doing good things and saving people, but not like a soldier. Once their family member is taken hostage, they can transform into that robotic killer and tear through their enemies like paper to save their loved ones and make the enemy's pants dark in three shades. CW's Arrow even did this when Oliver's secret son was taken hostage, or rather gave in to his kidnapping, and Oliver was forced to rescue him. This actually wasn't that bad in my opinion. Sure, the boy had no character and was just useful for this plot, but Oliver's want to save him was at least believable. His capture was part of the villain's plan, since it got Oliver away from his friends just so he could watch the island with all his friends and family blow up, hitting him hard. The only downside of this plan was that it didn't work except kill the mother, which is completely stupid, but off topic. How do I summarize this in, like, a phrase? Hostage taking is a good classic for villains to do if you want your hero to have an emotional response or a sudden dramatic shift. The next step up from family is just targeted by enemies is to have the family somehow play into the plot. This can be done directly or indirectly. How can they affect it indirectly? One way is to have something happen in the family that creates the reason for the hero becoming a hero. I know that was kind of weirdly worded, so let me give you an example that better illustrates the point. Eh. Thomas and Martha Wayne. Their death is the motivation behind Batman tackling the crime problem of Gotham. By taking on his rogues gallery and street criminals, he aims to prevent another child from losing their parents like he did. Though, sometimes the Waynes get worked into the other indirect way parents can be used, and that is, they somehow cause the problem to happen. Sometime before the plot effects of the main character and supporting characters, the parents caused it. This could be done by betraying an old group they were a part of, and the story starts by the main character seeing their deaths and thus wanting to exact revenge. Even if you don't have an adventure or action story, you still can use the parents in this way. Love story? Arranged marriage in the past that is uncovered or the source of conflict as the main character has someone they are attracted to, but also someone bound to them by a marriage contract. Science fiction? Maybe the parents made first contact with aliens that currently are hostile, or perhaps created the technology that allows your civilization to traverse the stars, but got lost or sucked into some other plane of existence. The only limit to what a character's parents can do is the imagination of the writer. 
Another example of a parent playing an indirect role is as a motivational support character. In times of a crisis or self-doubt, there is always somebody there to get the character out of that darkness. Usually it's the mother to play this role because women are the more emotional type, but it doesn't have to be that way. A father can connect to their children in a way that a mother may not be able to because in the end, they're different people with different beliefs and actions. So again, it's up to the writer how they treat and comfort their children. When looking for an example of this as well, I got an even better example of how to do a parent's guiding relationship with their child, and that was Madoka and her mother Junko from Madoka Magica. There were two moments of their relationship that really stood out to me, but episode 11 is really why I wanted to go deeper into this. After Sayaka's body is found and a memorial is held for her death, Madoka seems even more down, and we get to see Junko feel like she's let Madoka down by not being able to help her. Later, when she tries to be a good mother, she is much more aggressive, to say the least. She tries to talk Madoka out of it and have her stay with the family since a massive storm is going on and is obviously dangerous. However, when she fails to persuade Madoka to stay, she gives her a light push forward down the stairs. It's a small gesture, but the sentiment behind it is that her mother is basically cheering in her corner. Even if she doesn't want her to endanger herself, Junko realizes that the only thing left that she can do is to give her daughter her support in some form. What I'm trying to get at with this little moment is that the relationship is a two-way bond. They both react to the other and are hurt by one another, whereas some other familial relationships can solely be one way with one seeking comfort or advice in the other. It's just really great and another reason to watch Madoka Magica. To apply a neat little bow to this one as well, Having a character seeking comfort or advice in a parental figure is another nice relationship, but you can go even further by having them both react and care for the other. They do say love is a two-way street after all. What else is there? Uh, family relationships are honestly one of the closest relationships you can get, and can even be used as a dagger into the max of a character. Yeah, let's go with that. So let's start talking villains in the hero's family. One way to do this is have the family, or someone in the family, be the villain. If your character wants to save their parent despite them being evil, then that can lead to some good drama. To have the parent keep poking holes in their ideas and pushing and frustrating the character until something breaks, whether that be the character giving in and accepting that idea, or the villain's heart being broken and letting in their child's love fill their hearts and redeem them. If you want to go the extra distance, you can do something like Shadowverse or Miraculous Ladybug, where the evil parent is doing something evil in order to save their loved one. It puts more drama into it as the character wants to do good, but could be persuaded or tempted to evil if it means saving their other parent. They also would have to pit the weight of what they value more, their parents or a much larger populace put into harm's way. The parent being a villain could also mean the character was abused by said parent in an attempt to make them subservient, but instead fueled their desire to kill said parent, and the entire plot is just a revenge story to ruin the life or kill the parent. Another way to give a big screw you to a parent is for the character to decide to live their own way. Say the parent had their entire life set down a certain path, like they'd follow a political career or become the evil king, but the child decides to leave and make their own choices. The relationship between the two is broken in that moment, and maybe the parent tries to force them back onto their path by ruining parts of their life or targeting their friends. This puts more pressure on the character to decide whether to stick to their guns and keep living their own life, or give in to their parents' demands so the chaos stops. How to end a story like this is, is that after a revenge story where the parent's life gets ruined beyond oblivion while the child is A-OK, -okay, or a redemption after making the parent realize all their choices were in the wrong because it hurt them, and if they really want the best for their child, they should let them fly free rather than keep them kept safe in a cage. Now, there's one more I want to talk about, and it is an offshoot of the previous relationship type I just gave. 
this one can work if the parent is both is either alive or dead, and that's living in the parent's shadow. There may not be a plan or destiny for the character that was set by the parents, but other characters may assume that one exists. Your character's father was an evil king defeated a couple years ago by some hero? Well, everyone is going to look at the child or character as evil, and the story will be them trying to clear their name and separate themselves from that awful past and be someone else. Your character's mother was a famous hero. Then everyone will have high expectations for them, and the character themselves may feel more than normal pressure to try and live up to it. The specter of a parent's fame or infamy is great material for a character to deal with when trying to figure out who they are. Suffice it to say, there's a lot of family relationships to make, break, and affect, and a relationship with family I would consider special in a different way to a friendship or a romantic relationship. Family relationships are bonded by blood, whether it is liked or not, and that can make much more powerful drama. If you lose all your friends, you still will have your family to fall back on and come to your aid, assuming they aren't terrible or all dead. But breaking or threatening that relationship is good material for stories. Even if it's not the main focus, it can still be a big part of the plot, or actually be part of who the character is or was. I feel like I had more to say, but being stuck in the cell is affecting my mind faster than I thought it would. But since I get good internet here, I can try to go more in depth in the comments if any of you seek advice, but that's about it for this installment of Signs of Bad Storytelling. I'll, uh, see you all later. Peace.